Open your Bible in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Amen. When they are say Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. We're going to start in verse 7. Amen. Verse 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 7. For the mystery of loneliness is already at work. Hallelujah. And you know, this was written thousands of years ago. Amen. Amen. It, it was at work. The mystery of loneliness and that time, imagine it right now. We see it everywhere, right? Loneliness. Amen. Amen. The mystery for the mystery of loneliness already at work. Only he will now restrain will do so until he is taken out of the way. And then the loveless one will be revealed, whom the Lord will consume with the breath of his mouth, and destroy with the brightness of his coming. Hallelujah. The coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan. With all power, with all power, and all power come from God, with all power, signs and lying wonders. The deceiving things, the devil do always in the entice people to deceive them, you know, false miracle, see, false signs and wonders. Verse 10, and we all unrighteous deception, unrighteous deception among those who perish, because they did not receive the love of the truth. If you don't receive the truth, you have to receive something. If you receive something, the lie. You the opposite of truth is the lie. That's right. Okay? So the person that doesn't receive the truth receives light. And that's what the devil, that's what the devil does. Entice people. You see, take it away from the truth. See, that they might be safe, and for the reason God will send them a strong delusion. Yeah, why the strong delusion? Because they already been deceived. They already receiving the lie instead of the truth. Okay, that they should be, that they should believe the lie. Right? That they, that they all may be condemned who did not believe the truth but have pleasure in unrighteousness. Some people have pleasure in unrighteousness. Amen? That's, that's, that's what they are, they are, that's what they like. You know, there's not God. Because of the not God, they send them to, to condemn them, they themselves, because they love unrighteousness, because they don't love the truth, they go in the wrong way, in the wrong path. They, 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 the ears cannot listen to the truth any longer. See? See, like, you know, where, wherever we look, unrighteousness is being insulted. It's seen right now, you know. Because wherever you look, unrighteousness, everywhere. Righteousness and far from. Yeah. Even believers, they call themselves Christian, they walk in unrighteousness, but they think they're okay. Yeah. You see, this was written many, many, many years ago, but it's like it was written for today. You see, this is the word of God. And that was happening by the time of the apostles. Imagine right now. We cannot deny that we live in a righteous world. 
We have to listen. We have to love the word of God. We have to love the truth. Because we don't love the truth, you're going to receive the lie. If you receive the lie, you're going to walk in the lie. Amen. You have to be strong in the Lord. You have to be established in the truth. Because you don't have, you're not establishing the truth. This world, this world system, we, we pull you mm -hmm. to the, his way. To his way. Okay? You have, you have to be strong. That's what the Lord, we have to be strong. Amen. And the truth. You know, don't receive lie. Come on. It doesn't matter where it's coming from. See? Here, there was warning the church. You see, a long time ago, but it's like for now, for the church now, too. Right. Righteousness everywhere. Establish, be established on the truth. Amen. Love the truth. Love the truth. Come on. Delight in the truth. Amen. Meditate on the truth. Lead by the truth. Because you lack this system with the unrighteous and with the life weak. Suck you up. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 1. Amen. Let's start in verse 21. the faithful city has become a harlot. It was full of justice. It was full of justice. That's where this, this city started, right? Good. You know? It was a faithful city. <laughs> and then became a harlot. And some, some, something kind of start good, right? Mm -hmm. But then I finish. But I see believers. Uh, they start go with we you know a lot of fire from the things of God. And then they start getting warm. You see, remember the Bible said to be hot or cold. Mm -hmm. You want to think you're right, but you're not right. That's the I think that's the worst state. You know why the world state? Because the heart is hard, everybody knows how. The, the cold, everybody knows that person is cold, but the one is in between. You see, it's a danger place. You're not there, not here. But you think you're good. He <laughs> said, it was full of justice, was full of justice. Rest in a logic in it, but not murdered. You see, the churches are real good. And then, light. There are a lot of false churches. Maybe in the beginning they started in the right path. But then, whatever reason, they start drifting away from the truth. And 
That's why you have to be careful. They go, oh, they used to be. No, they used to. You know, many churches in the world are fire, but down you go and they're dead. They are dead. Only when you see their programs to try to entice the people with their programs, activities, no truth, no present. When I say present, the presence of God. Because they have the present, but it's not the presence of God. Verse 22. You see, there have become drugs. Your wine meets with water. Your princes are rebellious and companions of thieves. Everyone loves brides. Hmm. And follow after rewards. You see? What is for me? You know? What about me? You know, that's what you hear in church in churches. What about, what, about, what about me? I want this, I want that. Looking at the rewards. What is my blessing? <laughs> and follow after rewards. They do not defend the fatherless. Nor that the cause of the widow come before them. Therefore, the Lord said, because those things, the Lord of hosts, the mighty one of Israel, I, I, I will read myself on my adversaries and take vengeance on my enemies. I will turn my hand against you and tell me Push away your drugs. And take away all you alloy. Verse 26, I will restore your judges as at the first, and your counselors as at the beginning. As the world which shall be called the city of righteousness, the faithful city. You know, what happened is, if the people repent, the restoration. Amen. You see, righteousness will be restored. Come on. Even now that we see all unrighteousness going on, righteousness will be restored if people repent. Amen. When I say, first of all, the people of God have to repent. Okay? Because just make it in the house of God. It's because last unrighteousness in the church. They fail they have to repent. See, this prophecy easily you can apply it to this time. Okay? That's why you say, oh, that was the Old Testament. No, God's speaking to us today, to the church. Many start started good in the right path. You see full of, of, of justice, but then they, they were enticed, you know, for, to watch their rewards, after material things, after fame, all those things, see, and the Lord said, the Lord said, I will restore you. The only thing you have to do is repent. Amen. See, because the Lord, he said, you know, in John, in first John said, we, if we confess our sin, the Lord is faithful and just Amen. to forgive of the all unrighteousness and cleanse off from all unrighteousness. <laughs> you see, he does that if we repent. Amen. See? So don't say, no, this prophecy is not for us, just for us. Hallelujah. Repent and bring what? Restoration. Amen. Repent and bring blessings. Come on. Matthew chapter 6. 
in what the will of the Lord for us to walk in righteousness. Amen. Amen. Matthew 6, 33. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. What we have to seek first? The kingdom, the kingdom of God. No, our own agenda. Amen. No, our own thing. First, the kingdom of God. Amen. Amen. The kingdom of God and his righteousness. So we have to seek to ourselves, right? I'm seeking the kingdom of God and now living a righteous life. Mm -hmm. You know, at the beginning, God spoke his word, right? And everything was made by the word of God, okay? By the word of God. Amen. God speaks his word. We cannot change it. That's right. He spoke his word, okay? You have to receive it, believe it, and walk in it. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. Okay? All these things, we, we, you go back and you read all those things that people seeking after, you know. He said, now you. So now it's the kingdom of God. We first, we have to seek first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness. God will have those things. Okay? He said it, and we have it. If we do this, if we see first kingdom and his right. Amen. I remember one day somebody was like angry because this scripture, Matthew Sister did, well, the kingdom of God have added to you. <laughs> right. This is the word of God. He said hey, if you follow the word, it will happen in your life. Amen. If we add those things to you. If you seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. Because he already spoke. And, and when God speak, he don't take it back. Wow. And nobody can change it. And you follow what will happen to you. Because why will happen to you? Because God said it. If you follow when you believe his word. And you're doing it. Like someone came to one of my meetings and after the meeting, that person, that is a lady, we're talking about the word of God and say, Oh, agree. we're gonna to agree to disagree. No, you don't agree to disagree with the word of God. The word of God is what it is, what it God says, that's it. That's right. It's not about agree to disagree. Are you believe in the word of God or not? Yeah. And that's your problem. Because this is not, uh, we're not going to argue about this, they agree to disagree with the word of God. Uh, you agree or not, that's your problem. But you're not going to come to me and tell me we're going to agree to disagree. <laughs> what? This is the word of God. Amen. That's what I believe. I believe the word of God. And your problem is you do not believe. That you, you are going with God, but not with me. Come on. Because I'm not going to enter in a, a, an argument with the word of God. This is the word of God. That's what I believe. Take it to God. Take it to Him. Amen. Tell Him that you don't agree with His word. Don't tell me. Don't tell me. See, see, the people of this world, when I say these people of this world, I'm talking the people that are not Christian. Those that are now born again. Okay? They, they go after pleasure, material things, 
but the believer must seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Amen. If you believe this word, if you say you are a believer, if you say you are a Christian, if you say that you are born again, that you son of God, that you disciple of Jesus, that you daughter of the king or son of the king, <laughs> you must seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Amen. First, say first. You see, in my Bible, this verse is in red letter. I mean, Jesus speaking. Okay? Speaking to the people. And still, this is the life of those who want to seek me, want to follow after me. This is the life. <laughs> this is the life of those who want to uh, become my disciples. Okay? Are you a disciple of Jesus? Amen. Okay? Are you a disciple of Jesus? Listen what he's saying to you. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added to you. Okay? To you. Disciple of Jesus. Come on. Seek first, first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And then those things will be added to you. You see, you, you now all this world. You in it, then you not. You belong to the kingdom of God. Come on. Okay? And for the cities of the kingdom, first is the kingdom of God. And his righteousness. Amen? Amen. First. And not second. And not third. First. Amen. What about this? First the kingdom of God in righteousness. What about that? First the kingdom of God in righteousness. Jesus is not going to change. What is first in your life? So what is first in your life? What is first in your list? What is first? And your life. Remember, you're dealing with God and with men. It's not about me. It's about your relationship with God. And don't tell me you have good relationship with God, with the Lord Jesus. If this you not receive his word, you just say, the one who loved me, keep my word. If we know that the word of Jesus, the same word of the Father. Because Jesus only spoke what I heard from his father. Okay? This verse, this, his father told him to say that to us. <laughs> first. What effect? That's right. Amen. Don't forget that. I remember when the Lord spoke to me this word many, many years ago. And that's what they wanted me to live by it. What's the matter what? And someone was sharing because a person was asking, well, what what could I do? What is your resolution for the next year at that time? And I and everybody answered. The thing they want, <laughs> but you, and you know, and I answered this because that's what the Lord spoke to me before I got to that meeting. <laughs> I didn't know that person, the 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 leader of that meeting, was going to ask this question. I didn't know because it was a prayer meeting. Um, this was, but the Lord spoke to me before I got there. I was in a row when the Lord spoke to me. He said, "This is your resolution for you and your family." Now, for now, and when I got there, boom, that question. And that person got so angry, what about your family? I said, my family is including this. But we have followed this. That includes my family. Amen. Because first, I'm seeking the kingdom of God and your righteousness. Amen. He said, all those things will be added to me. I mean, God take care of me and my family. Your That's family. Right. Okay. Hey, what 
the, you see, God wasn't fair in the least. You see. And we see it because the result of that, because I, I remember all those people were in the meeting. Yeah, I know God is not first in the life. The kingdom of God and irrational is not first in the life. I know that. I can't say that. Romans 5. You want to argue against the word of God? Because you think you, you fight it with men, the men they, they got saying to speak. You fight it with God. Two cannot walk together if they're not in agreement. That's right. Okay? You cannot walk with God and you're not in agreement with God. You say, I don't believe that, I don't want that. Okay. Don't say you walk with God. Don't say you're in fellowship with God. Don't be a liar. Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 5. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Romans chapter 5. I'm going to read one verse again in Romans. For if by the one man's offense death reigned, we know what that who was the man? Adam, right? For if by the one man's offenders reigned to the one, much more those who receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness will reign in life to the one, Jesus Christ. Okay? Okay. Restoration came to Jesus Christ. Amen. Adam, see, Adam brought a rising. <laughs> Adam brought offense. Jesus brought restoration, brought righteousness. Amen. Amen. And we follow that. And we walk in righteousness because we receive that gift. So it's a gift from God to Jesus Christ. But we walk in righteousness, we, we live with Him, right? We live with him, we walk and fellowship with him because we have to be unrighteousness with righteousness, not right. To be in fellowship with Jesus, that means you have to walk in righteousness. Amen. Amen? Amen? Come on. See, that righteousness of Christ, because we are saying the righteousness of Christ because he brought it to us, right? The righteousness of God has to be seen in the life of the believers. Okay? That righteousness. And everything we do. Sometimes we have to restrain ourselves, right? Not everything is, is, is right for us to do. You know, you're not going to glorify God, don't do it. It's not, it's not right, you know, don't do it. Restrain yourself. Come on. Okay? Just, wherever we go, wherever we be, righteousness has to be, people have to see that righteousness in everything we do because. We all already received that gift of righteousness through Jesus Christ. We are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Amen. Okay? That we have to live in righteousness. Okay? It was a gift, remember, it was a gift. Okay? But you have to walk in it. Represent Him. Because, you know, the preacher, the light to people, the gift, it's, that's not righteous. You see, they, 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 uh, they see the people to give for money. I just put one example, I just put one example, okay? Because many think that some preachers do, they're not right. But with the money, most of the things, they can do all the things right, but they, when, that, when it's about money, they forgot righteousness. They deceive people to get it. 
to get that money. But they can do everything right, but when it's about money, some just they don't care about righteousness. <laughs> they want that money. The righteousness, the righteousness Christ, wherever we go, as believers, people have to see righteousness in us. Mm -hmm. In our work, in our job, in our jobs, schools, with our friends, when we get together with our friends, you can't go together with your friends, go to dinner, go drink a coffee, whatever you want, go, go, go do a sport, but rational has to be in your life. Amen. Okay, that, that nobody's saying that you're not, you, you, you cannot fellowship with people. You are supposed to have fellowship because we are created for fellowship. But have to be righteous. If you are in, in a place, got it together with other people, there's no righteousness there. And you cannot assume your righteousness because they attack you. You have to leave. <laughs> That's not your meaning. You're not, you're not supposed to be there. You cannot force people to walk on something they don't they did not believe, even if they call the same Christian. They don't, not because you want to be there, you want to change who you are. So who could represent the Lord here? Mm -hmm. See. Let's go to Second Corinthians, chapter five. Verse twenty-one. Second Corinthians, chapter five. Verse twenty-one. For in name who knew no sin. Yeah. To be seen for us. That was Jesus, right? The Father made sin. The Father made sin. So that men paid for our sins. When he did not sin, Jesus was sinless. When he walked here on this earth. Amen. And remember when, when they were accusing Israel, who can accuse me of sin? Who? Nobody could. They lied. <laughs> they said thing that wasn't true, uh, that was untrue. See, Jesus was righteous. Oh, oh, all and true, Jesus was righteous. Okay? We have 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21. For he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us. Okay? Jesus, remember, he was tempting all things he did not sin. Right? Okay? That... That, that we might become the righteousness of God in Him, you see? So he paid for us, he, he brought us the gift of righteousness. Remember, we read that in Romans. He brought the gift of righteousness that we can live through Him. Okay? That's the fire may you see. For us, that we might become righteousness of God in Him. Righteousness of God in Him. Okay? So now, because we in Jesus, we can walk in righteousness. Okay. Now we are the righteousness of God in Him because Jesus lives in our heart. Okay. We are the new nature. He gave us the gift of righteousness already was given to us. Amen. Okay. Just who are the righteousness of God here? Us. Amen. Because Jesus, where Jesus is, at the right hand of the Father. Okay. He lives in the heart yet, but He's not walking here in the flesh. Who walking here in the flesh? Yeah. Us. We are. The, where people are going to see righteousness? In mm -hmm. us. Come on. Not in the people that are not Christian. You're not going to find righteousness. Do you find righteousness outside? No. No. Okay. God shows his righteousness through the believers. Amen. Okay. Like the same way he chose love, he chose love through us. Okay? 
Yes. Come on. How he showed love to the world, to Jesus, when Jesus is saying just to die. For God so loved the world that he saying his only begotten son, the whosoever believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So the love of God, people didn't see God, but they saw Jesus. And Jesus showed and brought the love of God to us. Okay. Hey. Jesus gave us the gift of righteousness. Now we become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus to show righteousness to the people, displaying the righteousness of God to this world, Come to on. this unrighteous world. Amen. This is practical things. Not living by imagination. I'm in, I'm in fellowship with God. I'm in the clouds. When they're inside the, the congregation, when I, they, they go out, they forget where, where the anointing is. <laughs> if you are anointing, you, you are still anointing. Come on. Okay. If you have fellowship with God in private, you continue that fellowship of God when you go out. Come on. Jesus did not have only fellowship with the Father when he was in private. He displayed God. Everything that was God when he walked amongst men. Amen. And that's the will of God for us too. Because already equip us. He gave Amen. us his new nature. He, he gave us the gift of righteousness. Amen? Amen. Yes. God chose his righteousness to the believers, to this world. That's the way God chose righteousness. Through the life of the believers. The believer, wherever the believer had found himself, he had to walk in righteousness. Okay? That's the way it is. And not only inviting people to church, I invite them to my church. No, show off the life of Christ. Or say, oh, I go to church. That, 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 that's not enough. Good, you go to church. And I, and I pray that you go to a, a, a church that they teach you the sound doctrine. Sound doctrine. But what you let me, you let me sound out, you walk in it. The people can see it. Not just telling them to go to church. Amen. Ephesians chapter 6. You know, God wants us to walk in those things that we are. Amen. Okay. He's not talking to us, he's telling us to do something at nine months. That's right. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 14. You see, even here in, in chapter 6, that we talk about the, the whole armor of God. Let's we talk about this many times, but we're going to read only verse 14 right now, okay? In verse 14, it stand therefore. Having God there, you waste weak truth. You see? Walking in truth all the time. Amen? Having put on the breastplate of righteousness. Amen? We walk in righteousness. Put on the breastplate of righteousness. Truth, righteousness. Remember the other teaching, love, true and righteousness, that we have to be established in those things. We start now, we are talking about righteousness. You see, press play your righteousness. Where? Don't take it off. When we put it on righteousness, when we receive Jesus because he brought the gift of righteousness, then don't take it off. <laughs> don't like, like people used to say, oh, I'm going to put the whole armor of God. No, no, no. If you put it on, you put it on the dangerous Jesus. Don't take it off. Come on. The breastplate, the breastplate of righteousness. Amen. That means you walk in righteousness all the time. Amen. Amen. All the time. Second Peter chapter three.
Yes, yes possible. To walk in righteousness. Amen. Why you say that? Because the Lord is saying that we are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Amen. Second Peter chapter 3. Let's start in verse 10. Hallelujah. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in which the heaven will pass away with a great noise. Man, you heard that noise that, that you were like, <laughs> I can say you were scared with that noise. Okay, the Lord is coming. <laughs> Hallelujah. Are you ready? Uh, hey, we don't need to be scared when the Lord is coming. We don't know when He's coming. That's right. But we're coming. We know it. Yes. You know when He's coming, we know it. That everybody knows that He's coming. Everybody. He's not going to come in secret. The same way he, he, he left, that everybody saw it. The same way he's coming, everybody, no, that's why you cannot be there and say, Jesus over there, no, no, don't listen to that because when he coming, everybody will, will know that he's coming. Amen? Yeah. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night and with the heavens will pass away with a great noise. Yeah. At this of the night, we don't know when he's coming, but when he's coming, everybody will know. Okay? We know in the elements we met with fervent heat, both the earth and the world that are in it will be burned up. All those things that people love too much will be burn, burned up. Okay? Therefore, because that, seeing all these things will be dissolved, okay, listen to this. What manner of person ought you to be? A holy conduct and godliness. You see, because you know those things are going to happen. Then what kind of, of person you going to be? They tell you how, what kind of person we're supposed to be? In a conduct. Okay? It's a holy and godliness. Because that's going to happen to this. It's not going to wait. It's start now. Amen. Walking in, 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 in godliness, in holiness, because we don't know when the Lord's coming. The, the true believer is not supposed to be afraid of the coming of the Lord. Come on. Because the true, the true believer is supposed to be living in holiness and godliness. Amen. Okay. It's like the Christian is supposed to be afraid of death. It's not like we want to die. We're not supposed to be afraid of death because where do you going when you die? You're a true believer. Come on. You go to heaven. You go with the Lord. And, 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 and we're not supposed to be like, yeah. Okay. But we're not saying, you know, hey, I want to die now. No. But you're not supposed to be afraid. You're walking with the Lord because you know you want to see Him. Come on. Face to face. You see, what come do we supposed to have while the Lord is we waiting for the Lord? Godliness, holiness. And we'll be talking about righteousness, but really righteousness. Amen. Okay. Amen. Amen. God. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Verse 12. They don't, don't, I don't want any argument. Oh, no, nobody, nobody can leave that. No, they don't, don't say that. You want to tell God that he's a liar? We can do all things through Christ who is strengthening us. Amen. Be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Amen. You see, you have to believe in him. First of all, you have to believe in him. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of the faith. That's what you are asked to be again. Looking for, looking for and hastening the coming of the day of God, you see. Because oh, with the heavens will be dissolved, being on fire, and the element will be melted with fervent heat. 
verse 13, nevertheless, we, but the believers, we, according to, to his promise, what his promise is coming. Amen? Look for new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. Amen? Amen. Just don't wait until you go to heaven. <laughs> Start walking in righteousness now. Okay? If you really believe this, okay? It, you remember the Lord's coming from a church without, the Lord's coming from a church without yeah. spot and wrinkles. That's right. Okay? And righteousness, to me, is a spot and wrinkles. <laughs> <Bad. laughs> okay? Amen. So you walk in righteousness and you say you're a Christian, hey, you're not part of the church. Because he's the one that's, that the Bible, the Bible says come from the church without spots and wrinkles. And he's saying to us, because this is world, because he's coming, and everything, every kind of big burnt up, is a Jew, as believer, walk in holy conduct and godliness. Okay? That's the word of God, right? Amen. But we know, when you finish here, I say, and we righteousness dwells, okay? So we know the righteousness will be restored at the end, okay? Remember, at the end. But the Holy Spirit is speaking of restoration, of righteousness now, of the church. Okay? Now. I'm talking the weight is now. Restoration now. Okay? And, and you know how he did that? Some people call it revival. But whatever a strong Christian is, God brings interruptions because he's actually through that person. You know, we are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Amen. Okay? And because that, God can restore the people around you. That's right. Because you. Because that's, that's the whole thing of the gospel, to bring restoration to people. Amen. But we got to walk, we have to be that letter. Okay. The epistle of Christ. Okay. We. And now God do it. I want to pray to God do it. No, but you are there. People have to see it in you. That's right. We cannot take our responsibility. God will do great things. The thing we cannot do, but we have to do our part. That's right. And our first walk and righteousness. Amen. They can restore people around us. Even other Christians, they maybe they, they lost their way. Amen. That's the word of God. You cannot, you cannot doubt the word of God. You believe something. You believe the blessing of God. You have to believe this too. Okay? I believe everything of the word of God. Amen. I don't know about you. And I know that each one was here for the purpose, the purpose of God, the will of God, and God wants to restore people, even those that have lost the way. Amen. That's the will of God. That's right. Amen. Amen. 